Hello and welcome to Mile High Reavers. I'm Scott Anderson and we're getting towards the end of summer. And if you're like me, it's the end of summer and your tank's not looking as good as it could. So this summer has not gone to plan. So for this reef vlog, let's look at getting our tanks back to where they should be. Now, unfortunately, I didn't do what I wanted to do this summer. My wife hurt her back. I've had other stuff to take care of. So the tank has kind of fell by the wayside. And you can see the tank behind me. This is my wife's tank. Now, I've heard many people say it, and I fully agree that taking care of more than one tank is a chore. Now, this is my wife's tank, so she's supposed to take care of this. But since her back's been out, I didn't do a good job. So let's get it looking good. So now it's time to work on the 24 gallon. I'm gonna start by scraping the glass. The blade on the flipper magnetic cleaner did a great job getting rid of all of the algae. The only problem is, is I can't get the bit right next to the sand edge because it's a rounded front of the tank. And I have to go horizontal when scraping the glass. If I go vertical, it won't scrape the algae off. The problem is, is if I go too close to the sand, I risk getting a piece of sand stuck under the magnetic cleaner. So I need another solution. For the stuff near the sand, I decided to go with an old school razor blade. The razor blade did a great job. It's just kind of a pain, but at least I wasn't risking scratching the glass. So now it's water change time. So I grabbed my refractometer and checked my salinity. I want to match the salinity of the water that's in the tank with the water that's going in. So unlike my big system, I've got to do this one the old fashioned way. So I turned the tank off and sucked five gallons out. To put the water back in the tank, I grabbed an old MaxiJet 1200, stuck in the bucket of water, and pumped the water back up to the tank. This is beneficial first because it's easy and I don't have to lift the bucket of water. Second, it allows me to pump the water into the rear chamber and it doesn't make a big mess of the tank when the water goes back in. The last thing I did was add a bag of GFO and carbon. I put this in a high flow section in the back of the tank and this will help get all of the phosphates and nasty chemical buildup out of the water. After a few hours, the 24 gallon tank was really starting to look good. Everything kind of settled out, it cleared up, it was looking great. Now, everybody's been asking for an update video on the Longhorn Cowfish. So I guess this is as good a place as any. As you can see, George Costanza is doing great. He eats like a pig, he's always going after the nori, he likes his LRS reef frenzy, doesn't touch the pellets, and he has done fantastic in this little tank. Long term, he will have to move to something bigger. And the big 210, well, all it needs is the glass scraped, a water test, and the skimmer cleaned. That's not too bad. Cleaning the glass in the 210 is a breeze. To begin with, I use the pad side to wipe all of that just thin film algae off. Then I flip the magnet over and scrape all that hard algae off. So the glass is scraped and I've just finished doing my tank test. Now, as expected, phosphates and nitrates were zero. No problems there. Magnesium came in at 1290, a little low. So I'm gonna go ahead and dose some magnesium. Calcium, 430, perfect, I'm fine with that. Alkalinity was 7.7. I'm gonna dose a small amount of alkalinity to bring that up, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm also probably gonna turn the calcium reactor up a tad bit. We then went downstairs where we turned up the flow on the calcium reactor and dosed some alkalinity and magnesium. I used the standard BRS two part to dose my magnesium and alkalinity. So the skimmer is an absolute wreck. It's a mess, it needs clean. But my kid and my wife need to do homework just a few feet from where I need to clean the collection cup out. So I'm gonna hold off until they're done because if I clean this skimmer, with a couple people sitting there with this nasty gunk coming out, I'm gonna be in so much trouble. I'm starting to run out of time. There's some Pokemons that need to be caught inside a ball, but the five gallon still needs done. So I go ahead and scrape the glass and start going on the five gallon. The big problem I'm having with the five gallon tank is it's starting to grow that red cotton candy out everywhere. Now, this is partly due to bad water flow. But this red cotton candy algae actually survives in really good water quality. So what I need to do 
is invest in a turbo snail. Turbo snails are known to eat the red cotton candy algae, so that would be the easiest method of cotton candy algae control for me in this little tank. Just like the 24 gallon, the 5 gallon tank needs a water tank. The great thing about a 5 gallon tank is I can do a 20% water tank using one gallon of water. This makes the water tank so much easier than any other tank I've had to work on in the past. And just like the 24 gallon tank, this 5 gallon gets a bag of carbon and GFO. After a quick reassembly, I clean the glass and the tank is as good as it's gonna get for today. I feel bad that this tank hasn't got the attention it deserves, but I've got big plans for it coming up. This tank is gonna get a skimmer, and it's not getting any skimmer. It's gonna get something really cool. So you're gonna have to stay tuned to check out what skimmer I put on a five gallon tank. I've heard a lot of people say lately that taking care of more than one tank is more than they can do. And I can understand exactly where they're coming from. The maintenance on these two little tanks isn't that bad, but when you add two tanks plus one big tank, it becomes a lot. Plus you add life and summer and it's a lot. But I love the tanks, they're fantastic. The little five gallon is gonna be really cool when I'm done with it. I've got some cool ideas for it. The 24 gallons come along great and the 210 gallon, it's slowly getting over the bio pellet overdose issue. The corals are starting to look a lot better. So I'm really hopeful that it's on the right course. Thanks for watching this episode.